Good morning and welcome to GMC Online on this Sunday, the 26th of April, to our worship service. Aileen Christie will be leading us in God's Word today, Aileen, of course, being one of our elders and one of our uh, preachers. And she'll be uh, delving into a couple of readings, a few readings, about encounters with Jesus. And boy, do we need some of our some of that in our life today, encounters with Jesus. So in our worship, as you open yourself, ask that you have an encounter with the risen Christ. Ask him today to come in his mighty power and his glory into your life, into your home, as we come together to celebrate in worship. So come, Father, and know our presence Come, Jesus, and know our brokenness. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring us peace. And as we invite Jesus into our homes, uh, if you have a candle at home, perhaps you have it lit, but uh, in Gillespie we light a candle as uh, Jesus is the light of our world and we bring his light into this dark place. Just a, a couple of uh, intimations, just, just to um, remind you that we now have some Zoom meetings going on during the week, and uh, if you want an invitation to any of them, we're not just publishing it out there on the internet, but if you want one, we'll message it to you through Messenger or WhatsApp or email. Just get in touch with me, and I'll get them through to you. They are coffee on the couch at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, where we literally do that, sit on the couch, chat with one another and drink coffee or tea is allowed. Uh, the book group continues on Wednesdays at 7.30 and each Thursday we have a prayer meeting. We gather through Zoom, we can see each other and we pray together. We bring our prayers for this world and our church and, and homes and individuals before our Lord. So you are most welcome to that. Uh, just a heads up, we have a new sermon series starting next week. I would have been going back into uh, St. Paul's letter to the Roman church, but I've decided not to. Um, I've been praying to God, and I'm going to do a series on isolation. With lockdown and changes happening, we're going to delve into different parts of the Scripture, both Old and New Testament, and uh, figure, have a look at some figures who find themselves in issues of isolation, uh, more of which next week. But... Uh, as always, continue to follow us on Facebook, and that's where you'll get the most regular updates and uh, messages about what's going on, um, and little wee snippets of prayer to come before the Lord each day. And if you need to contact us, the usual numbers are there, and the email address is on the screen. We are here for you. Our church is not closed. But let's get on with worship, and we're going to have a call to worship, and I've put some words up on the screen um, that I will start, and then I'm going to ask you at home to uh, join in. So, let's come before God. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Praise the Lord. We will give thanks to the Lord with our whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Amen. And now we will sing Love Songs from Heaven, followed by Jesus, we celebrate your victory. Love songs from heaven are Yeah. 
Christ has set us free. 
And now let us pray. Mighty God and Father, we approach the throne of glory in reverence and fear. For fear is healthy. Fear gives us assurance that you are mightier than we, more awesome in power than we are. And in the midst of our lives, you are sovereign and worthy of all reverence and worship. So Lord, we come now before you in worship of humble adoration, unable to do so in our own strength, for we are fallen and weak so often. We're felled by our own insecurities and anxieties, laid low by our sin and rebellion. Yet you redeem us and bring us the strength that we cannot generate ourselves. So redeeming God, bring to our hearts today the living assurance of your presence knowing that our sin is cast out to the widest, deepest oceans, when we come before you truly with repentant hearts. Lord, we give thanks for your forgiveness upon us, paid for by your Son. And so now as we enter into your presence, come into ours, in the worship of your holy name, Jesus come. Jesus, be the centre. Amen. Be the fire 
And now we come before the Lord again in our prayers. Mighty God and Father, we come before you with our prayers for our concerns for the world, the concerns of our hearts. A world that is in pandemic, coronavirus, COVID-19. Father, it all seems to be all-consuming. It's all that the media seems to be concentrating on, and maybe with great reason. But Father, there is, of course, so much more. There is chance that the, in parts of the world there will be famine, Father, and we do pray. We pray for your children all over the world. No matter what nationality, what language is spoken, what colour of the skin, what gender, all are your creation, created in your image. And Father, we bow down in our fallenness and ask your forgiveness and ask your intercession in our world. Father, we give you thanks where so much good is being done. And we pray against those who would use these times for their own ends, for their own gain, for their own evil deviations from your ways. Father, we do lift up those in positions of power, in leadership, positions within government, national governments, local governments, local authorities, leaders in business, in education, in health, and faith leaders too. Father, would you strengthen and guide and support in wisdom, in your ways. And Father, we ask you to guide our church in your ways, in your word, strengthen all those who have positions of leadership within church organisations that are now the church scattered and guide us to continue to proclaim your word to reach your people. Father, strengthen your people in faith, but also in the glorious hope of the resurrection, for we are a resurrection people. Christians are called to a life beyond this one. But Father, in this life, we are called to dwell also in this world. So, Father, let us make a difference and a presence in our homes, in our workplaces, in our streets, in our communities. And shout out the love, the compassion, the grace, the peace and mercy of you, our good God. Father, the prayers could go on intercession for individuals we have people in sickness and illness and dire need in our own church community you know who they are father you know each hair on every head and we lift them to you whether it is physical health mental health whether it is stress and anxiety whatever it is father we come to you and father now take the prayers on each person's heart who is viewing this Hear them and respond with your love and your grace. In the name and power of your mighty Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, Saviour and Redeemer, and all God's people said, Amen and Amen. My daughters used to love high school musical. Actually, if I'm honest, they still do. We're all in this together has become a bit of a refrain for our current COVID-19 situation. But I find myself in agreement with Lady Gaga this week. Not something I'd admit to often. But in an interview, she pointed out that while that was a nice sentiment, individual experiences over the last few weeks have in fact been very different. And we all know that to be true. For some, this has been a time of unimaginable grief, not just losing loved ones, but being unable to say goodbye as they would have wanted. For those on the front line, there are relentless shifts to work impossible decisions to take, and fears for their own and their family's health. 
where people live alone, isolation means long, endless days with no one to talk to. Whereas families with young children in flats with no garden are climbing the walls and craving their own space. Some have lost jobs or are worried sick about their businesses. While others are on furlough, paid to be at home and actually quite enjoying quality family time in the sunshine. You see, even something as global as this coronavirus has impacted on people in contrasting ways, produced different emotions and created a need for varying responses. As Christians, we are desperate to do something, but are perhaps feeling overwhelmed and confused as to what our reaction should be. Only two weeks ago, we celebrated Easter, and many became acutely aware of the similarities between Jesus' followers after the crucifixion, grief-stricken, lacking understanding, afraid, and our circumstances now as we face up to the unknown consequences of something we have never experienced before. What got them through? Quite simply, encounters with Jesus. We're going to think about those encounters today and how they can not only help us to cope with our situation, but also to reach out to others and share the good news that changed everything then and can do so again today. So let's read, firstly, in John 20, where we find Mary outside the empty tomb on the morning of the resurrection. Then we'll pick up the afternoon from Luke 24 before the evening back in John 20. John chapter 20, verse 14. At this, Mary turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Then in the afternoon, Luke 24, from verse 13, on the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what were you discussing together as you walked along? They stood still their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened here in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. And they went on to talk about the crucifixion and the mystery of the empty tomb. Jesus said to them, How foolish you are. And how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it's nearly evening. 
the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen, and has appeared to Simon. And finally, John 20, verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One day, three encounters. Encounters with grief, lack of comprehension, fear. Encounters which comforted, transformed and inspired in ways we can learn so much from today. Let's start with Mary. On Easter Sunday, Mike spoke movingly about this exchange between Mary and Jesus, but let's think about the background to it. Mary Magdalene had been one of his most devoted followers, but now she had witnessed Jesus, who had brought joy and purpose to her life, die a painful and humiliating death. She was bereft. She was heartbroken, alone at the tomb, lost in her own grief. But Jesus, Jesus had just risen from the dead. This was the most incredible thing that had happened in the history of mankind. He had suffered a horrible end, taking the wrongs of the world onto him, and now he had conquered death. He was alive. And what does he do first? He takes time to comfort Mary, the risen Lord, whose resurrection has changed everything, gently asks Mary, What's wrong? This moment encompasses what to us is incomprehensible. Our God, creator of the world, cares intimately about each and every one of us. It's easy just now, when the world is so messed up, to forget that God can and does still care about every hair on our heads. Corrie ten Boom, the Dutch Christian who assisted so many Jews during the Holocaust and ultimately was imprisoned herself, put it like this. Nothing is too great for his almighty power. Nothing is too small for his love. No matter how insignificant you may feel, God cares. We witness this again in the afternoon of that resurrection day. Two men, followers of Jesus, about whom we know virtually nothing. We don't even know one of their names. 
are walking away from Jerusalem. They've had enough. As Mary was consumed with grief, so they were consumed with questions. Perhaps a bit like us at the moment, they were discussing the same things over and over again, not being able to make any sense of it. But Jesus got right alongside them. He journeyed with them, listening patiently to their concerns, then explaining everything to them, accepting their invitation to stay longer and revealing himself as the risen Christ. Jesus then, as now, forgives our lack of understanding. We may not get all the answers to all our questions, but if we are prepared to journey with him, to face up to our doubts and confusion, he will reveal himself to us and take us to a place of faith where we can trust in him, even though we don't fully comprehend. And isn't that something common to both Mary and those on the Emmaus Road? Mary and the travellers were open and vulnerable. Mary's tears, the travellers' questions, allowed Jesus an opportunity to take them to a deeper place. Sometimes, and I put myself firmly in this category, we can be so determined to be strong for others, to present that brave face to the world, that we fail to linger over our failings, to deal with memories which make us feel sad and isolated, or confront our questions and doubts which hold us back. But in these passages, we see that Jesus is right there in the pain, gently asking questions, taking us to our most vulnerable place, then meeting us there, healing us, even bringing us to our own resurrection and a new life with him. Psalm 34, 19. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those whose spirit is crushed. There was to be one more encounter that day. Back in Jerusalem, Jesus' disciples were together in a room with all the doors locked, were told for fear of the Jewish leaders. And how understandable is that? Just a week ago, they'd walked alongside Jesus as he entered Jerusalem, basking in the glory of the Hosannas. Since then, one of their number had betrayed him, and Jesus had died horribly and so unfairly on a cross. They must have been terrified that they would be next. But perhaps there were other fears too. That morning, some of them had witnessed the empty tomb. What did it mean? For certain, it meant that things would never be the same again for any of them. They were having to face up to a different world where normal would not look like it did before. Change can be scary. And perhaps the disciples were not just in a locked room, hiding from the Jewish authorities but were also locked in by their own fears. My daily readings with Lectio 365, which I've mentioned before and can't recommend highly enough, focused on this passage in John 20 last week and asked, what fears are containing you? What do you find hard to mentally or emotionally escape from? Fear of change? Fear of the future? Perhaps you could take a moment to identify these fears now. Face up to them 
as Mary faced her grief and the travellers addressed their doubts. Imagine them around you like walls constricting you. Then sense Jesus appearing there at the heart. And watch those walls crumble as the words, peace be with you, hang in the air. Permeate your very being and set you free. We can encounter Jesus today in our grief, our confusion, our fear, just as on that first resurrection day. There's one final thing to note from each of these three passages, and that's what happens after the encounter. Jesus specifically instructs Mary to go to my brothers and to tell them he's alive. The disciples are told, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And the amazed travellers, remember, who'd had enough of it all and were heading off, immediately return to Jerusalem and share the good news. It's clear that encounters with Jesus are not just comforting, healing and informing experiences. When we truly open our hearts to him and allow him to change us, we are compelled to share the love, the peace we have found with others. And so at this time of national and global crisis and in the uncertain days to come, May we seek his guidance to help us ask those gentle questions of those we encounter, whether physically or online, and so bring comfort to those who are heartbroken, like Mary. Create an open forum as we journey alongside those with questions like those on the Emmaus Road and share peace with those who fear, like the disciples in that locked room. In the coming week, may we feel our hearts burning within us in the knowledge that our God holds this earth and every single one of us securely in his hands.
name The demons flee At his name Captives are free Now may the peace of God, which is beyond all our understandings, guard your hearts today. And may the blessing of God the Father, the love of Christ the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit reside in your homes and upon your hearts and the hearts of those you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>